Hello students. In the today's session, we are going to cover the topic introduction to hemodynamics. Now, hemodynamics is a science that deals with the circulation of blood in the body and the factors that regulate the circulation of blood. Under the introduction to hemodynamics, we are going to discuss types of blood circulation that is the systemic and pulmonary blood circulation. Then second, we will talk about the conducting system of heart that, that is how the pacemaker or the cells of sinoatrial node they generate action potential and the action potential is triggered in all the directions of the heart so that the heart contracts as a unit. And third, we are going to talk about blood pressure. What exactly is blood pressure and uh, the factors that regulate the blood pressure. Now, under the introduction to hemodynamics, first we'll talk about the circulation of blood. Now in the body there are two types of circulation, one is the pulmonary circulation, other is the systemic circulation. So we will discuss about both these circulations. Now this is the diagram of heart, uh, as we all know heart is a hollow muscular pump and the function of heart is to supply blood to each and every cell of the body. Now the heart is divided into two parts by a septum, uh, this is a septum uh, and it divides the heart into two parts, left part of the heart and the right part of the heart and each part of the heart is further divided into two parts. So overall the heart has four chambers, right atria and the left atria, right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now it is the right atria that receives deoxygenated blood uh, from the body. Now there are two veins, one is a superior vena cava and other is inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava brings uh, deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body and this blood is received by the right atria and uh, on the other hand it is the inferior vena cava which brings deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body and this blood is also received by the right atria. So the right atria receives deoxygenated blood from the entire body. Now when the right atria contracts this deoxygenated blood it is pumped into the uh, right ventricle. Now when the right ventricle contracts this deoxygenated blood it is pumped into the pulmonary artery and via the pulmonary artery this deoxygenated blood reaches the lungs. Now in the lungs this deoxygenated blood is oxygenated and the oxygenated blood uh, is carried by the pulmonary vein and this pulmonary vein carries this oxygenated blood to the left atria. So from the heart from the right atria uh, the blood goes to the lungs for oxygenation and from the lungs uh, the blood comes back to the uh, to the heart. So this movement of deoxygenated blood or this circulation of deoxygenated blood from the right atria to the lungs and from the lungs the circulation of oxygenated blood to the left atria is termed as to be the pulmonary circulation. Now uh, it is the left atria uh, which has received the oxygenated blood. Now when the left atria contracts the oxygenated blood is pumped into the left ventricle and when the left ventricle contracts this oxygenated blood it is pumped into the iota. Iota is the largest artery of the body and uh, the function of iota is to supply body tissues, uh, the body tissues of entire body with the oxygenated blood. So iota supplies oxygenated blood to each and every cell of the body. Now oxygen is consumed by the body cells, by the body tissues and the blood gets deoxygenated. Now these, this deoxygenated blood is carried uh, from the lower part of the body uh, by the inferior vena cava and it is uh, carried uh, from the uh, it is circulated from the upper part of the body, the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body is carried by the superior vena cava. There is a superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, they bring uh, deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body and from the lower part of the body respectively uh, to the right atria. So this circulation of blood, uh, this circulation of uh, oxygenated blood from the heart to the body and the circulation of uh, deoxygenated blood from the body to
to back to the heart is termed as the systemic circulation. Now, uh, let us uh, discuss in brief about the properties of uh, cardiac muscles and the functioning of heart that is a conducting system of heart. Now, there are four cardinal features of cardiac muscle tissue and uh, these four features or the properties are uh, the most important of all that is the automaticity, then conductivity, rhythmicity and all or none phenomenon. Now, this is the diagram. This diagram shows the wall of heart. This is a heart and uh, this is the wall of heart. Uh, the wall of heart is made up of cardiac cells uh, termed as to be the myocardium and myocardium is made up of uh, two types of cells, normal cardiac cells and uh, specialized cells called as the pacemaker cells. Now, these pacemaker cells are uh, like the SA nodal cells, uh, the cells of sinoatrial node, they are specialized cells called as the pacemaker cells and the cells of SA node, uh, they, they are termed as to the, be the pacemaker cells or the nodal cells and they possess the property of automaticity. So, this is a property of automaticity which is, uh, 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 which is possessed only by the pacemaker cells or the nodal cells uh, like the cells of sinoatrial node. Now, automaticity is the intrinsic uh, automaticity is the intrinsic or the natural ability of heart to depolarize itself spontaneously without any external stimulus and trigger an action potential. Now this action potential it is uh, uh, triggered in all the directions of the heart. Uh, so uh, the cells uh, that is the pacemaker cells they get depolarized and they trigger an action potential or they generate an impulse and that impulse or that uh, action potential is triggered in all the directions and uh, since it is uh, triggered in all the directions it is the heart uh, that contracts the whole heart contracts as a unit. Now this is the diagram that shows a conducting system of heart. Now the elements of conducting system of heart are the sinoatrial node, then atrioventricular node, bundle of his, then the bundle branches that is the left bundle branch and the right bundle branch and the small fibers called as the Purkinje fibers. Now we will talk about these elements one by one. Now first of all is the SA node or the sinoatrial node. Now SA node depolarizes and it generates the action potential or impulses. Now impulses they are generated at a rate of 60 to 80 impulses per minute. Now this SA node it is located in the wall of the right atrium and it is called as a pacemaker of heart uh, because it is the SA node that gen generates impulses or the electrical signals. Now impulses from the SA node they sweep over the entire wall of the atrium so that the two atria they, con they contract at the same time simultaneously. And the time taken by uh, the action potential generated by the SA node to reach the AV node is about 0.1 second. And that is the time taken by both the atria to contract. Now the impulse uh, from the SA node reaches to the AV node. From the AV node the impulse travels to the bundle of his. And from the bundle of his the impulse the same impulse which is generated by the SA node it travels to the two bundles that is the left bundle as well as the right bundle and finally that impulse is transmitted to the Purkinje fiber and uh, uh, this results in the uh, transmission of impulse from the AV node uh, to the apex of ventricular myocardium and this results in the contraction of both the ventricles. So, contraction of atria is followed by the contraction of ventricles and the entire heart contracts as a unit. So, this property of uh, transmission of impulse which is generated by the SA node throughout the atria and the ventricles is called as the conductivity. That means a single impulse which is produced by the SA node, that single impulse is responsible for the contraction of atria both the atrias and the contraction of both the ventricles. One impulse and one contraction of the heart. 
Now third property is the rhythmicity, property of automaticity and conductivity leads to the property of rhythmicity. That is the heart contracts in a rhythm. When one impulse is generated by the SA node, the entire heart contract contracts once. And on an average, SA node generates 72 impulses per minute and as a heart contracts or beats 72 times per minute. So this property of the heart, that is the heart always contracts in a rhythm, is termed as a rhythmicity. Now the fourth very important property is the all or none phenomenon. Now a single impulse generated by the SA node, it travels to the uh, single impulse generated by the SA node, it travels to the atrium, uh, that is to the atrioventricular node and uh, the same impulse travels to the uh, apex of heart, uh, resulting in the coordinated pump activity of the entire heart, that is the entire heart contracts as a, as a unit. Now either the impulse generated will contract the entire heart and produce a complete response or there will be no response that means there, there will be no pumping of the heart so uh, this property that either the heart contracts as a unit or the heart does not contract at all is termed as all or none phenomenon now under the introduction to hemodynamics now we will talk about uh, blood pressure and the factors regulating blood pressure now the lateral pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the blood vessels is called as a blood pressure. Now this is a uh, this is a blood vessel which uh, I have shown over here. Now the blood is flowing uh, through this blood vessel and uh, this arrow it shows the lateral pressure. Now this is a lateral pressure which is exerted by the blood by the circulating blood. So the lateral pressure exerted by the circulating blood on the walls of the blood vessels is termed as the blood pressure. Uh, there are two types of blood pressure. One is a systolic blood pressure, other is the diastolic blood pressure. Now, systole. Systole means contraction. That is, the blood pressure during contraction of heart is called as a systolic blood pressure. Now, when the heart contracts, it pumps the blood forcefully into iota and all the other arteries. Now, the pressure produced within the arterial system during the contraction of heart is high and it is called as systolic blood pressure. Now in a normal adult, uh, the systolic blood pressure is about 120 mm of mercury. Uh, the second type of blood pressure is the diastolic blood pressure. Now during complete cardiac diastole, both the atria as well as the ventricles relax. Thus the blood pressure is comparatively less in the arterial system. And this blood pressure is called as the diastolic blood pressure. It is about 80 mm of mercury in a normal adult. And normal blood pressure is defined as the systolic blood pressure uh, by diastolic blood pressure. And therefore, the normal blood pressure in a healthy adult is about 120 by 80 mm of mercury. Now, when we talk about uh, factors regulating blood pressure, there are two main factors uh, on which the blood pressure depends. Now, uh, blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance. Now, let us see what is cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood ejected from the ventricles each minute. Now, this cardiac output it is equal to uh, stroke volume into heart rate. Now, stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected during one contraction of the ventricle and it is about 70 ml. Now, heart rate, heart rate, uh, the heart contracts about 72 times per, mi per minute and therefore the heart rate is uh, 72 uh, beats per minute. So, cardiac output is equal to stroke volume that is 70 ml into 72. So, cardiac output is uh, approximately 5 liter. On uh, the other hand, the other factor on which the blood pressure depends is the peripheral resistance. Now, peripheral resistance is the resistance exerted by the walls of blood vessels against the flow of blood. So again this is a diagram, this is the diagram of a blood vessel uh, and the blood is circulating through this, uh, uh, it is flowing through this blood vessel. Now the pressure exerted or the resistance exerted by the walls of the blood vessels against the flow of blood, this is arrow uh, uh, I have shown over here. So uh, this arrow, it is a resistance 
that is exerted by the walls of blood vessels against the flow of blood is termed as the peripheral resistance. Now, peripheral re resistance depends upon the uh, cross section of the arteries or the cross section of the blood vessels. Now, uh, here I have shown three blood vessels. This is the uh, normal blood vessel with the normal cross section. Uh, this is the blood vessel, uh, blood vessel where the lumen has been widened. Uh, so, the lumen through which the blood, uh, blood is flowing, this lumen has been widened. This is termed as to be the vasodilation. There is the dilation of blood vessel. Now, because of the vasodilation, because of the widening of the lumen, uh, the peripheral resistance falls. Whereas, this is a blood vessel where the lumen has narrowed. Uh, there is narrowing of the lumen. Less space is available for the blood to flow. So, there is narrowing of the lumen termed as a vasoconstriction. Now, vasoconstriction increases the peripheral resistance. So, uh, the blood pressure, blood pressure depends upon the cardiac output and peripheral resistance. And the peripheral resistance depends upon the uh, dilation or the constriction of the blood vessels. Dilation reduces peripheral resistance and vasoconstriction increases peripheral resistance. Now, let us talk about the factors on which cardiac output and peripheral resistance uh, depends. Now, cardiac output depends upon uh, these factors. The first uh, factor is the stroke volume. Higher is the stroke volume, uh, more is the cardiac output. Now, higher is the force of contraction of the heart muscles. Uh, more will be the stroke volume and that results in higher cardiac output. Second factor on which cardiac output depends is the blood volume. More is the blood volume, more will be the stroke volume and higher will be the cardiac output. Now, blood volume in turn depends upon uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It depends upon antidiuretic hormone. Uh, third factor is the heart rate. Higher is the heart rate, uh, more will be the cardiac, uh, cardiac output. Uh, then the force of contraction of cardiac muscles as uh, we have already seen that higher is the force of contraction of uh, cardiac muscles, uh, more will be the stroke volume and uh, more will be the cardiac output. Now, peripheral resistance, uh, it depends upon diameter of blood vessels. We have already seen uh, with the help of a diagram, uh, vasoconstriction increases uh, peripheral resistance whereas vasodilation reduces peripheral resistance. Peripheral resistance depends upon the elasticity of blood vessels. Higher is the elasticity, lower is the peripheral resistance and more is the hardening of blood vessels, uh, more will be the peripheral resistance. Then it depends upon the viscosity of blood. Higher is the viscosity of blood, more will be the peripheral resistance. Lower is the viscosity of blood, lower will be the peripheral resistance. So, these are some of the very important factors on which uh, the blood pressure depends. So, this is all about the uh, introduction to hemodynamics. I uh, hope uh, you must have enjoyed the session. Uh, thanks for watching the video.